Our keynote speaker of this session of Act 5 is a personal hero of mine, a whistleblower herself, and the first to speak up on torture after 9-11 from the inside of the U.S. Justice Department in the case of the American Taliban, John Walker Lind. Jessalyn Radek knows what it means to risk everything. As a whistleblower, Jessalyn has paid a heavy personal price and she has been blacklisted and shunned. And from the situation, she has managed to build herself back up and has become probably the most important voice in this issue internationally. Unfortunately, President Obama, who I campaigned for and voted for, um, so I'm not, people are always like, you're anti-Obama. I'm not anti-Obama. I'm anti-anybody, anyone in a position of power who indicts people under the Espionage Act. And he has indicted more people under the Espionage Act than all previous presidents combined, which is, which is uh, hard, to, hard to reconcile uh, with his public persona. And he launched some of the most chilling and devastating investigations against countless other people who were trying to speak truth to power. This is not the McCarthy era. This is President Obama. And not surprisingly, not surprisingly, many of the indicted whistleblowers were people who exposed some of the biggest scandals of the Bush administration, including secret domestic surveillance and torture. During the campaign, Obama spoke out vociferously against secret domestic surveillance. And he's been very vocal about the fact that we do not torture. My client, John Kiriakou, was the first former CIA official to call waterboarding torture. And he revealed that the CIA's torture program was approved at the highest levels of the US government. He also showed that it was not a one-off or a few rogue CIA officers who were doing this, but was systematic. And he was, ended up being charged with espionage, a charge that the government was forced to drop as part of a plea deal. But he still served over two years in prison. He is the only only CIA official to go to jail in connection with the torture program. If Kiriakou had actually participated in torture rather than objecting to it, he would have immunity. That's what a number of the torturers received blanket immunity from President Obama on his third day in office. In a breathtaking act of civic courage, my client Edward Snowden pried open the most secretive agency in the world. In a cascade of revelations, each one more disturbing than the one before, journalists around the world began publicizing the information he risked his life to make available. It is tragic, it's a tragic irony that in an effort to preserve your liberties and mine, Snowden had to give up so many of his own. Without courageous whistleblowers like Thomas Drake and Edward Snowden, the world would still be in the dark about the National Security Agency's secret illegal surveillance activities. The public would be relying on misleading half-truths and outright lies from government officials about NSA's programs. Our clients are challenging 
some of the most secretive, most abusive U.S. government actions. We represent nearly a dozen individuals who worked on the U.S. drone program. Targeted killing with drones has replaced CIA's torture program as a first choice to eliminate someone suspected of terrorist ties without affording them any due process whatsoever. If you thought it was bad to torture people, it's, it's far worse, I submit, to remove them from the face of the planet. The consequences of the drone program have been devastating to the communities living under the constant threat of drone strikes and to the civilians who were killed and maimed and their families. But the government has either kept completely secret or obfuscated the truth about the program's casualties, effectiveness, and the legal reasoning. After pressure from whistleblowers and civil liberties advocates, the Obama administration recently released the civilian numbers for drone strikes. And these numbers are absurdly low, particularly if you actually communicate with the people in those communities that, that have been hit. Without courageous whistleblowers and the journalists who can report their disclosures, the public will remain in the dark about the darkest of secret government programs, which is assassination. The antidote to government repression, and the reason I'm so glad we're all gathered, the antidote is whistleblowers and protesters and journalists and activists and those who reveal information that the public has a right to know but the government wants kept secret.